So in today's lesson, I want to talk about uh, the concentration of solutions and ways that we can describe and calculate the concentration of solutions. So before we begin, let's make sure everybody has um, an idea about what it is that I mean when I'm talking about concentration. So concentration refers to the amount of solute in a given amount of solution. So say, for example, I had, um, you know, particle A, and let's just say that particle A was my solute, it's what's getting dissolved. So let's say in this first beaker, I had three particles of substance of solute A, and let's say that in my second beaker, I'm also going to have three particles of solute A. But let's just say when I'm going ahead and pouring in my solvent, in this first beaker, I'm only adding a small amount of my solvent versus in my, lar my second beaker, I'm adding quite a bit more solvent. I would say that beaker A has a very high concentration and ver, uh, versus beaker v, B, which is ver, has a very low concentration relative to beaker A. So notice that in both of these cases, I'm identifying that there are the equal number of particles of my solute. So I'm keeping the amount of my solute constant, but I'm varying concentration by adding a different amount of solvent to each solution. Okay, so a highly concentrated solution is a solution where there is lots of solute relative to the amount of solvent, whereas a solution with low concentration is one where there's a relatively um, large amount of solvent relative to the amount of solute in solution. So I should let you know that in chemistry, when we're writing concentration, a short form for concentration is to put square brackets around the substance. Okay, so for, for instance, when I put um, high, the brackets around high, I'm really saying high concentration. Um, so for example, let's say I were describing the concentration of solute A in that solution, I might, um, you know, I might indicate it as such. All right, but there are several ways we can identify concentration of a solution that we're going to talk about today, uh, and the first being percent concentration. So percent concentration um, is one uh, that we see quite commonly, and I'm going to discuss it first because it is, I think, the most common. Uh, another one you might be familiar with is parts per million or PPM, uh, parts per billion, PPB, or parts per trillion, PPT. So I'm expecting that some of you will have heard of that. So we're going to discuss it because it is, you know, fairly commonly used um, in sort of the general world. Uh, and the last of the three is one that's sort of used more in chemistry, tends to not be broadly used in society, but that's molar concentration. So first I want to talk about uh, percentage concentration. So percentage concentration, um, a lot of consumer products are going to use a percentage concentration. Um, I want you, this is some homework to tonight, for tonight, what I want you to do is I want you to go home and I want you to check out your vinegar bottle, just your regular old white vinegar bottle, and what you're going to see on it is at the very bottom of the label, generally speaking, is you're going to see that it will describe 5% acetic acid by volume, right? So, well, what does that 5% really mean? Well, when we think about 5%, we know that 5% really means five out of a hundred, right? So that means five parts for, per 100 parts. So, well, what are the parts that we're talking about? Well, in this case, the five parts describe our solute um, and the hundred parts describes the total volume of our solution, okay? So for every hundred milliliters of our solution, five milliliters would be pure acetic acid. So that's what we mean by that. So obviously, most people in the world have a good contextual understanding of what percentage means, right? With growing up in the school system, we have a good understanding just quickly about what maybe, you know, a 2% solution might mean versus like a 70% solution. We understand the difference in concentration really easily, which is why I think most Consumer products are going to use percentages because people are comfortable with them and we know what they mean. 
the one piece I forgot to mention, so I'm going to back up here for a second, is this V slash V um, that you will often see accompanied beside the percentage. So V slash V is really meaning volume, oops, it's really meaning volume per volume. So that when I go ahead and I say 5%, V slash V, I'm taught, I, and that means that both the 5 and the 100 are in units of volume. So for example, I could say 5 liters for every 100 liters, 5 milliliters for every 100 milliliters, but both the solvent, or sorry, the, sol the solute and the solution are in units uh, that are representing a volume. So sometimes it's important for you to know that you may see on packaging uh, percent WW, which means percent weight, weight. So I might see units of like grams and grams. Um, or also I might see um, weight volume, which simply means, you know, the solute is given in grams. Oops. The solute is given in grams and the solution will be maybe given in milliliters, for example. <clears throat> okay. So let's try problem out. So in this problem, um, I have, let me see if I can move this over a little bit. There we go. Move it over a bit. So um, I have a four, you know, a solution of ethylene glycol. And so my ethylene glycol, it turns out, is a 40% volume volume solution. Um, in water. So water is my solvent and the ethylene glycol is being dissolved into it or is miscible with it. Uh, and that's how we make antifreeze. And so I want to know, well, how, what volume, what volume of ethylene glycol has to be used to make 375 milliliters of this solution, right? So if I know that the total volume of my solution has to be 375 milliliters. I want to know, well, and 40% of it, right, so almost half of it has to be my ethylene glycol, right? But I know that that's there in like a percentage of 40%. How do I figure that out? Well, you know, it's a chemistry question, but really it's as much a math question as anything else. Because if I wanted to find out 40% of anything, you know, it wouldn't matter that it was ethylene glycol or not. So to solve this question, I simply have to say, well, 375 times 0.40. So notice that I've converted that 40% to a decimal. And that will tell me the amount of ethylene glycol that I need in order to make a 40% solution. So 0.4 times 375 gives me 150. So that tells me that I need to add 150 milliliters of ethylene glycol into my container and then I would fill the rest up to a volume of 375 milliliters with pure water and that is it. So at this point what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to your Google Classroom and I'd like for you to try out the percent concentration questions that are given on today's worksheet that you'll find in the link on today's post. And then when you're ready to resume the video, um, once you've completed those questions and you've been successful with them, then you can carry on. So let's talk about parts per million, billion, and trillion. So my guess is that if any of you have encountered parts per billion, trillion, uh, or million, it's had to do with maybe your swimming pool or perhaps your hot tub. Even on the side of a container of um, like water or whatnot, you'll often see um, some of the ions listed as in being in parts per million. So what does part per million mean? Well, um, you know, usually we're using it to describe solutions that are, have very low concentrations of solutes. So for example, if I were to say that you're, you know, that a particular solution is five parts per million, that means that five parts of solute are contained per million parts of solution. So, you know, if you can imagine, five parts out of a million parts is very, very low concentration of your solute. You don't have a lot of solute that's there in, um, in your solution. 
So let's, you know, I want you to have a conceptual understanding of what five parts per million means um, before we move on to our formula. So let's take a look at this formula to help us calculate parts per million, right? So if I want to know concentration in parts per million, I'm going to take the mass of my solute and I'm going to divide that by the mass, the total mass of my solution. And I'm going to multiply by 10 to the power of 6. And I think that makes sense because 10 to the power of 6 is our million. That's where we're coming from. In fact, I can also do this for percent. If I, we, we, I didn't do this, but you know, certainly you could think of it this way. If I wanted to get a formula for percent concentration, I could also say that it's the mass of my solute divided by my mass of my sol solution, same as above, but times 100 instead. And, um, you know, and that will get me um, a concentration in percent. That's another way to think about it. But anyways, moving on. Um, so I want you to think for a minute before you, res you watch the rest of this video, but what would you expect the formula to be for parts per billion? Well, parts per billion would have the exact same structure, except that the difference would be instead of 10 to the power of 6, I would have a 10 to the power of 9 to represent the billion parts, right? Um, so really, really small amount. Um, and then parts per trillion, as you would expect to see, would instead have our 10 to the power of 12 to represent the trillion. Okay, so before we move on though, I have to make note of something that is really particular. You'll notice that in each of these cases, we are dividing by the amount of our solution. So in the case of parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion, the concentrations we remember are really, really low. So it's almost as though I have no solute in my solution. And so I'm gonna assume that the density of my solution is the same as the density of water. And just to remind you, the density of water is one gram per milliliter, which means that if I have one gram of water, that's essentially in uh, indicating that I have one milliliter of water. So those, you know, for water and solutions of very low concentration, that is an interchangeable value. All right, so let's practice a problem here. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, people, if they're going to struggle with any aspect of concentrations, it tends to be with the parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion. But let's, uh, let's break it down. So in this question, it is saying, dissolved oxygen in natural waters is an important measure of the health of an ecosystem, right? That water needs to be dissolved in order for aquatic species to be able to uh, undergo respiration. In a chemical analysis of 250 milliliters of water at STP, 2.2 milligrams of oxygen was measured. So in other words, you know, if I wanted to visualize this, right, I've essentially got this, you know, sample, it's like a jar probably, of water, and it happens to be that the jar contains 250 milliliters of water. And if I were to measure all of the oxygen in there, I would have 2.2 milligrams of water in it, or of oxygen, rather, in it, right? So I want to know the concentration, however, of the solution, not in any old units, but specifically in parts per million. So let's revisit the equation that I would use for parts per million. So the concentration in parts per million is equal to my mass, of my solute divided by my mass of my solvent, or solution I should say, because they're not always the same, times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, so now here's the thing. I want to be really careful about my units here because my units have to be for mass of solute and mass of solution have to be able to cancel, right, um, so that I end up with parts per million. So that means my ma whatever unit I'm using for solute, I have to be able to put in for solution as well. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a little bit of side work here. I was looking at my units. So I know that 2.2 milligrams 
is equivalent to 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 grams, right? And I also know that my 250 milliliters, you know, is my solution, but that should also be equal to 250 grams because the density of water or something close to water is going to have um, it's going to have a density of one gram per milliliter. So now I'm in the position where I can say, all right, well, I've got units of grams for my mass of my solute, and I've got units of grams for my solution. And so I'm good to plug in those values into my formula. So my mass of my sol solute is the 2.2 times 10 to the negative 3 grams, and my mass of my solution is 250 grams. And you can see here that my units will cancel out nicely. And times 10 to the power of 6 to make it out of a billion. So when I plug this into my calculator, I am getting to two sig figs, 8.8. .8. And of course, my units are parts per million. And that seems about right. So um, again, some cautionary points here. Just make sure your units for both your solute and your solution are the same so that they cancel out um, and that should help you out. So I'd like you to pause the video, go ahead and try the second component of our concentration questions today which involves parts per million, billion, trillion. Give those a whirl, uh, ask your classmates for help if you need it and then resume the video when you are ready. Okay, so on to our third method of describing concentrations of solutions, and that is molar concentration. So I'm going to tell you that this is the calculations we're doing today using molar concentrations are the ones that um, I find to be the most common. I, do the, I make these calculations all the time when I'm making up solutions for science classes. Um, and so, you know, what, is a, what, is, what do I mean by moles, uh, molar concentration? I'm talking about the number of moles in a given amount of solution. So if I say moles per liter, that really means how many moles would there be in a liter of that solution. So there are two different ways to describe, to write that unit out. You could write moles per liter as moles slash L's, and that's actually my preferred method. But notice also that there's this capital M here. So, in other words, if I were describing a solution that was, you know, two moles per liter, I could either write it as, oops, two moles per liter, or I could write that as two and then capital M, and they be, both mean the same thing. Uh, and so, again, what that would mean is that if I had, a, you know, a beaker that was exactly one liter in terms of volume, and I had two moles of my solute divided in or dissolved into it, then I would have a solution that had a concentration of two moles per liter. Okay, um, so uh, as I've written here, you know, if I have a, a one molar solution of NaCl, that means I would have one mole of NaCl measured out for every liter of solution. So describing this from a mathematical perspective, I can say, well, if I want to know the concentration in moles per liter, okay, so this is just concentration, then I would take the number of moles that I have, so my number of moles, and I would divide that by the volume of my solution, right? And so if I have moles, uh, number of moles in units of moles, and I divide that by units of liters, then I end up with concentration in moles per liter, and that works out. So let's take a look at a problem. So in this question it says, how would you make 350 milliliters of a 0.50 mole per liter solution of NaCl? So this question would be a lot simpler if I wanted a whole liter of solution, right? If I had wanted a whole liter of solution, then I would just simply need to measure out, you know, 0 0.50 moles, right, um, on a scale. I would convert that to mass, and then I would go ahead and dissolve it in a liter of solution. But I don't actually want a whole liter of solution. I only want um, this smaller amount, the 350. 
So maybe pause the video and think about how you might go about that. Uh, maybe chat with a neighbor if you can, if you have the opportunity. Maybe you already have some ideas. But before I go ahead and, uh, and describe this, the, you know, the process, maybe you have some ideas that you might want to contemplate first. All right, so let's start with, I've broken this down to steps. The first thing that I would do is I would say, well, let me find out how many moles required to make the given volume of solution. That is what I would do first. So what do I mean by that? Well, I would say, well, I have 0 0.50 moles per liter. Oops, let me just rewrite that maybe. It might be easier to see, moles per liter. But I don't want a whole liter of it. I only want 350 milliliters. So in order to make this work in terms of my unit cancellation, I'm going to divide my 350 milliliters by 1,000, and that will give me 0 0.35 liters. So 0 0.35 liters. And when I work that out, I get... Sorry about the pause there. Uh, 0 0.18 moles. And of course, I'm going to keep an unrounded value in my calculator. I've rounded to two sig figs for the you know point of representing my numbers accurately. All right, so that's my first step. So now I know how many moles that I need. Um, you know, but the thing is, is that moles are not something I can easily measure on a scale, right? I can't just weigh out moles. Right, and so um, I know that, but I do know that if I were to kind of create a solution, oops, that I would find my container that would have to be fit at least 350 milliliters of solution, and I would dump in as much solute as, as is 0.18 moles, and then fill to a volume of 350 milliliters with water. But the problem is right now is I have no idea what 0.18 moles of NaCl looks like. So I'm hoping that you guess that step number two is to convert the moles of my solute to a mass value because then I can actually measure that on a scale. So I'm going to find out my mass of my solute. In this case, it's NaCl. And that's going to be equal to my 0 0.18 moles times times the molar mass of NaCl, which I have calculated ahead of time to be 58.4 grams per mole. And there you see my units nicely cancel out there, and I'll be left with a mass that I can actually measure. Um, so, plugging that into my calculator... I'm getting roughly 10.2. Now, I only have two sig figs here, so I have to be careful about how I write that. I'm going to write that as 1.0 times 10 to the power of 1 gram, and that maintains my sig figs, but I'm going to keep my unrounded value in my calculator. So now, let's see where I am. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to say, well, place the mask of, of, you know, of my NaCl. Oopsies. I'm going to place that in my flask. Remember this flask up here. I'm going to weigh out you know, roughly a little over 10 grams of my solute. I'm going to dump it in my beaker, and then I'm going to fill with some distilled water to a volume of 350 milliliters. And if I do that, then I should have a, con a solution that is 0 0.50 moles per liter. So here is a second example that I would like you to try. So it says 5.0 grams of copper bromide are added to 150 milliliters of water. What is the concentration of the resulting solution in moles per liter? In moles per liter. So um, I want you to give that a whirl. See how you do on your own. See if you can figure it out. And then uh, when you're done or if you're stuck, resume the video and we can take it up together. Okay, so when I look at this, I know that eventually I am going to need to get units of moles per liter. So I need to get my mass into moles, and I need my volume into liters. So step number one for me, and it doesn't have to go in this order, but this is how my brain works, so I'm, that's how I'm going to describe it. So I'm going to convert my um, copper bromide, so my moles of copper bromide, C-U-B-R, to... I'm going to convert that into uh, my grams into moles. So 5.0 grams of copper bromide 
and I'm going to divide that by the molar mass of copper bromide, which I have looked up and um, I'm seeing it to be 223.37 grams per mole. Now, if you're getting a slightly different value than that, it's probably just due to differences in our periodic tables and that's no big deal. Just go with your value. And I am getting uh, to two sig figs, 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. That's my value for moles. So this is my next step is, well, I know that that's how many moles I have, but I know that I've added that to two, 150 milliliters of water. So 150 milliliters Dividing that by 1,000, that gives me 0 0.15 liters. And so I've got my units, I've got moles, and I've got liters. So now my third step is going to be to just remember that um, concentration equation, which is concentration in moles per liter is equal to my number of moles divided by my given volume. So 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 2 moles divided by 0 0.15 liters. Notice I've got moles divided by liters, and that is moles per liter. And so that gives me, to two sig figs, 0 0.15 moles per liter. And I'm done. Hopefully you did okay with that. Or if you're stuck, you got stuck, then you watched the video and it, you were able to make sense of it. So that is it for our examples today. Um, now you should be ready to attempt the third portion of our worksheet today um, that describes molar concentration. You'll notice that some of the questions get quite tricky near the end. Do your best to try to be resilient through them and try to work through them even though they are difficult. Talk to your classmates and try to figure out a method to solve them. And if all else fails, I will be back in class on Wednesday and we can discuss.